Welcome to the latest episode of Tech Connect, your monthly podcast from the uh, we Coloma. Were bi-weekly podcast. <laughs> bi-weekly. Uh, from the Coloma Community Schools Technology Department. Uh, and we're joking about that because... Uh, we have one in the can. We have one in the can released. that didn't get released because, because it's October... It's no longer timely. It was, October was crazy. It was crazy, and um, the, the only question I think we had was how handsome our systems administrator is. But uh, we're not going to talk about that today. I am Ben, the director of Sorry, technology Nathan. for Coloma Community Schools. We had a really and good And on my right, the gentleman speaking is? I'm Dan. I'm the director of curriculum and state and federal programs and still hold on to that instructional tech title because I get to make a podcast. I'm Matt. I'm the IT support specialist here at Coloma Community Schools. And I'm Tanya, another one of the technology specialists in the district. As well as power school guru. Guru. Mm-hmm. Queen. Wizard. I suppose. Wizard. <laughs> 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 I suppose. All right. So uh, we're doing things a little bit different. We didn't put out asking for questions or anything. This time we thought we'd just go ahead and put out something provocative and let you react and then send us thoughts on it. This episode, while brief, is going to be all about AI. So AI, AI for use in school in 30 seconds or less, good, bad, or I'm not sure. What do you think, Dan? I'm going to go neutral on this. I think a lot of ways it could be very, very good, but I also can see some of the downsides to it. Um, So it's going to be about adapting and changing and responding to it and how we adjust the way we teach is going to be what's going to make it ultimately good. Cool. What do you you think, Matt? I'm leaning more into good. I, I agree with Dan. There are some downsides, but I think if the tools are used properly and... And you know, shortcuts aren't taken. I think AI could be the next like next step in all kinds of areas, from research to education and, and everything. I think AI is a good tool as long as it's used properly. Well, my turn. Um, I I'm not going to go against the flow on this particular topic. I think that it is. It's something that we have to embrace. It's not necessarily something that we have a choice in. Um, I don't think it's going anywhere. And I think that uh, we just have to find ways to support the learning given that the kids have these tools out there to help them. Um, I just I feel like it's it's not going away and if we don't teach them how to harness the energy I think that it will lead to laziness and you know lack of learning well I mean uh, the, all, all good points all good points um, and I think I don't think anyone would would argue the fact that you know the majority of students are probably looking for how to, how can I get through the school day doing the least amount of work possible. And I don't want to say that like with a wide brush, but there's certainly a lot of students that are there that, hey, look, I already figured out what I'm going to do with my life, especially by the time I get to high school. So it's like, what do I need to do to get there? And AI is this tool that that could potentially give them that opportunity to get there with even less work. But I, I, I agree with what everyone said right here. Um, about its its use and of course everyone right now in in a lot of uh, uh, k-12 settings saying yeah yeah we need to embrace it we need to find a way to use it so what I did was uh, I actually worked with um, Dave and uh, uh, the people that help us with our board policy over the summer and we actually have new board policy that was just recently adopted um, and we're sitting in front of uh, all of us right now because I think it's really important to start with a very clear frame and that frame is in our board policy now about the use of artificial intelligence and natural language processing tools. And it says explicitly um, that staff can go ahead and use AI. It also says that students are allowed to use AI and natural language processing tools in the school setting if they receive prior permission, consent from their teacher, 
so long as they use the AI and natural language processing tools in an ethical and responsible manner. So pretty much to the point of what you we were all agreeing mm -hmm. on right here. Teachers have the discretion to authorize students to use AI and natural language processing tools for the following uses. And we'll get into those uses real quick, but I felt it was important to have some board policy in place. So there was a very clear frame and a very clear red line because the paragraph before this, which I didn't read because it would be way too boring, but the paragraph before this basically says, hey, the use of artificial intelligence for kids to do their work, like, hey, I have to write a five paragraph essay. Chat GPT, write this essay for me. Boom, turn it in. That falls under academic dishonesty, plagiarism, everything like that. So this policy explicitly says if students are going to use artificial intelligence to just do their work for them and then turn it in and say, this is my work, that is not allowed. That is not allowed. And that's board good. policy I, has... I think that's what so many of us are afraid of, is that that's going to be what's going what's is, to happen. Is what's going to happen. And so I want to make sure that board policy had those teeth first for mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. to maintain that academic integrity. But this whole other part talks about here are the way, ways that teachers um, uh, not only encourage but can use with students. So the, the there's one, two, three, four, five, 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 five ways. Uh, research assistance, data analysis, language translation, writing assistance, and accessibility. And then there's like little blurbs about all of this. But I thought it might be a good idea to just talk about how you guys, how we've used AI already that might align with one of these. So for me, for example, like writing assistance, I've used AI already to help me write um, presentations, to help me write... Um, not policies, but like procedures. Yeah. Right? Because like something like a procedure is like, if I'm going to create a procedure, which we do a lot, right? And quite often it's just a procedure that's going to be for me. Someone else has already written it out on the internet. And this is something that teachers are famous for doing anyways. You know, like, hey, someone else has already done this work. Let me go look at this lesson and let me tweak it. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I've done this numerous times. Create a simple 12-step procedure and now I go in and I tweak it to tailor it to our needs, and then boom, here we go. It's no different than me copying the directions on Google on how to set up two-factor verification, which I literally did two weeks ago. That's plagiarism, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I sent it, and I sent it out to people. So, so there we go. Did so, you, looking did at this, you cite what, your sources. I, 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 I did. I linked to the source. I actually, linked oh, to it. So wow, here you go. Okay. Even better. So. so, so what do you think? Looking at these, what are what are some ideas, or what are some ways that you've used AI for one of these already? Well, I have used uh, AI recently. Uh, I went to a meeting and I was told that I needed to generate a picture uh, for a slideshow. And just so that you know, you can create a picture of anything doing anything, pretty much. Um, I have also used AI to create a syllabus for a class that I had the outline for of what I wanted to do and I just said, hey, create a syllabus based on this outline and it, you know, created all my targets and everything. So mm -hmm. it, it can be, when used, when harnessed, uh, it is incredibly powerful. So the syllabus that you created, you said, hey, create this syllabus for me. It gave you your targets, your, your, your learning targets, where you were headed, what you needed, all those little bits and pieces. Was it perfect? You just took it and you ran with it? Uh, no, absolutely not. Okay. Um, you know, you always have to go in and make sure that it makes sense. I mean, uh, it, it's a computer, so while it might look like it makes sense to the computer, while you're reading it, uh, a human might find discrepancies in what it has offered you. Right. Right. Well, and, and you have to have, you had to have a working knowledge already of what a syllabus is and what a syllabus looks like. But more importantly, what's the point of a syllabus? Right. So that way. <laughs> yeah. And I had to give it, I had to give it background information. It wasn't, I didn't just say, hey, create a syllabus for this. I gave it my outline. So it was very specific about what I was doing, what I was teaching, the steps I was taking, and it just wrapped it all kind of in a fancy little package for me so that, I, you know, it makes it, uh, uh, outlines it very easily and efficiently. Nice. M Matt, or, Matt uh, or Dan, like, what, like looking at these different 
writing assistance or accessibility or language translation, data analysis or research assistance? Like, have you used AI in any of those capacities or how could you see it being used, like for yourself? Well, I, I can relate to uh, the students a lot because I myself am still in college. And so I've had to do some research and, and working on papers and stuff. And I found that AI uh, is a big, has been a big help with that because you can get summaries, you can get keywords and all this and that just just from glancing at your, you know, a research paper and this and that. And so you can just compile so much more information so much quicker and faster than Googling, uh, you know, a keyword here and there and you get 20 different articles and you have to spend an hour reading all of those different articles. Um, you know, and so I think that is a big a big step is getting through research a lot more efficiently and easier. But kind of like uh, you were talking about having the background knowledge with the syllabus, uh, you have to have the background knowledge of, of what is the proper research and, and the proper things you're looking for. Uh, because while AI is a great tool, it, it isn't the best at pooling information uh, mm -hmm. quite yet. Mm -hmm. hmm. For me, like I, I think about all those things. Like I think about Google when I was a kid and having to make sure that we use quotation marks and the and symbol and all these other pieces that have just been taken out because now the computer has learned what I mean when I type in what, do, what sound does a donkey make, right? Um, data analysis, the explore, the explore tool in Google yeah. Sheets does that where I can have a set of data in a, in a spreadsheet and I can ask it a question and it's gonna generate me an answer or a graph. I think that's incredible. Translation, as, as, as director of state and federal programs, the migrant program falls under that and I have used AI to help me translate to Spanish as a non-native Spanish speaker. Um, writing <laughs> yeah. assistance, how yeah. many people mm -hmm. have Grammarly installed on their device? That's an AI writing assistance tool I, I that we're we already using. we actually have that accessible to pushed kids. out to, to, to and students. I, and I've heard yeah. teachers tell kids, like, install Grammarly. It'll help you with writing. Yep. And that's an AI tool Bingo. that we can use. I mean, it, it, and, and it's the little stuff. It's the stuff that you pick up on after a while that, that is starting to fix it. And you get to accessibility, a, a site like diffit.me is going to take any article, any PDF from the web, and give it to you at whatever grade level you need it to be at for your kids or small groups of kids. Like, there's so much power and possibility in this, which is why it's ultimately going to be a good thing. So, I, I, I think yeah, I think we all agree with you. And we had a little pre-conversation before we started recording about like when calculators started becoming a regular thing in the classroom, and and then they were commonplace, and teachers would still tell their kids, hey. We're going to do this by hand. We're going to do this on paper. We're going to work through the math. You're going to show all of your work and everything. Because I want you, I want you to understand how to work through these equations and how to do this math. And then once we get there, okay, now here's how you do the shortcut with the calculator, right? Yeah, so right. you understand what's happening. And I think it's the same thing. Yeah. And and you said it uh, when you were talking about um, using an, a, a tool to produce a graph or a chart for you, right? Right. Across several of our standards, not just English, but also in the content areas, social studies and mm -hmm. science and math, our standards that talk about being able to interpret data yeah. in a graph. You ask a tool, hey, create this graph for me, this chart for me, you need to be able to go and understand then right. the, what it produces. Is this accurate? Is right. this actually telling me what I think it is? Yeah. And so you got to be and, able to understand that. And I think to like, again, dating myself here, like Excel came out on a home PC <laughs> and here I am and, and my dad being a forward thinker is making sure that I know how to graph on Excel yeah. and turning in a computer generated graph and then getting in trouble for my elementary school teachers. Because you, did, yeah. you didn't, you didn't, you didn't you don't, do it by you, hand. You don't know how to graph. And it's like, well, the last time I made a hand graph would have been... In elementary school, like mm -hmm. it, it's not something that you know. I, I think our skill sets change, and I can still graph anything you need me to graph. Uh, it's, it's but yeah. No, on exactly. the flip side, it's it's like if I'm in a business professional meeting, and I pull out my hand drawn graph, like I'm going to get laughed out of the room. I just lost that bid. I, I it, and that's the reality. Like as we prepare these kids for the future that's going to be one of those things that we have to consider is that they're going to go into a workplace that's going to expect them to use mm -hmm. AI in an ethical manner yep. to help them be more efficient. So on, on that note, I said it was going to be a short podcast because we just want to get our thoughts out there, but not, not, have, not be a, exhaustive because there's, this is going to be a long conversation. Yes. And it's going to be mm -hmm. a conversation that involves 
teachers, mm. administrators, yes. Yes. us, right? Because there's also some 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 implications behind the scenes that we didn't even address uh, as far as uh, uh, what's 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 allowable based on age limits and Google tools in that environment. But um, I think if anything, if you listen to this, um, I think what's important then is you probably had a lot of questions or a lot of concerns. Bring those to us. Bring them to Tanya. Bring them to Matt. Bring them to Dan. Bring them to me, right? And so that way we can start this conversation and talk about it. But I think this is what's a nice note to end on is that uh, also in this board policy, there was a little bit that I highlighted um, that states artificial intelligence and natural language processing tools can be effectively used as a supplement to and not a replacement for traditional learning methods. And as we mentioned before, we've all have examples of how we've used AI to supplement and assist our learning, but it's not, it's not going to replace the important learning that needs to happen because fundamentally we still need people to understand what we're asking these tools to help us create. So on that note, we'll leave it at that and we'll leave the conversation open and we'll come back for part two, hopefully more than Less than a month away. In less than, we'll, we'll have it out for you for your Thanksgiving listening. Ooh, there you go. So let us know your thoughts, and because uh, uh, we want to keep this conversation going, and we want to keep it on a path that's that's constructive. And yep. how how can yep. we how can we use these tools appropriately? So. And speaking of that, I have a great exercise that's got a graphic organizer for what constitutes plagiarism, and what's not when using AI. If you want me to come in and help with your kids understand a little bit about that, I'm happy to do that. I've got an AI tool that creates graphic organizers for me. I'm good. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is one, this is one that can help with kids have that conversation about, yep. you know, at what point does something become not their work anymore. Yep. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks, everyone. And we'll talk at you later. Take care. Bye. See you. Adios, amigos.